Call me Master Zangas, I'm a flippy bass. You see the stupid title, no wasting time to get into it. Potentially one of the most compelling aspects of a time travel story, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion, is looking at all the different ways that time travel can go wrong, right? I feel like every good time travel story has to explore the various ways in which the time travel itself can fuck up either the timeline or the time traveler. Uh, welcome back to Babel. This uh -huh. is a time travel story. And at the point in the story we're in now, we're starting to get a look at all the different ways that time travel can fuck up basically. And so where we left off, right? Coda, our main character is starting to realize that, all right, hold on now, bro. This time travel shit, it might not be as OP as he initially thought, right? He's coming back from having just gotten shot in the shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. he reset the timeline so he could escape this near death situation. But what he's finding is that even though he escaped the situation, the injuries did not escape him. He sustained the injuries that he had That's some bullshit. obtained during this situation. And so he's bleeding down his arm, right? Bleeding onto the floor of the hotel lobby. But before he could really have time to do anything about this, he, you know, stumbles his way over to the elevator to make his way back upstairs. Because despite resetting the timeline, he's a man on a mission now, right? He's got things to do. In the meanwhile, our girl Naomi, uh, she checks into the hotel <laughs> and she looks down to find that she is pregnant as hell. and. We're going to talk more about this Naomi pregnancy in a bit. This chapter really does get into Naomi's pregnancy as far as like... Man, they got to explain what the hell going on, bro, dog. Because I thought he's doing... The goofball is the one that goes back in time. Why the fuck is she pregnant? Like, what? Right, she's basically due at this point. But we're going to get into all that in a bit. We cut back to Coda in the elevator, though. He goes right to Yang, right? He makes his way up to the royal suite. He's got some stuff to discuss with Yang. We then also cut to Ozaki. Now, if you remember in the last episode... Ozaki and Koda had forged an alliance, right? They had decided over the last couple episodes that they would start working together. But where we've cut back to, where we've jumped backwards in time, Ozaki has never met Koda, right? And so mm. he's still on this hotel on the first night. He's still smashing this girl. And, you know, he's thinking to himself, he's like, so this is my first job. I have to kill this woman here in the babble. Now, we know as the readers that he does eventually go on to successfully kill this woman and mm. shove her into a suitcase and then uh, a washing machine. It's a lot, right? But at this point in time, right, because we leaped back in time, Ozaki has restarted from zero. He hasn't killed this woman yet. We then cut back to Koda, right? He's in the room with Yang and Akiyoshi. Yang is in bad condition, period, right? He just looks... That man needs some milk. <laughs> decrepit, but Akiyoshi, who apparently knows how to do surgery, is working on fixing Koda's shoulder, right? He's telling Koda, like, bro, you're lucky this shit didn't hit any bone. Like, I'm able to fix this, but normally I wouldn't be able to. And Koda, he looks over at Yang, right? Yang is not in good condition. He can barely breathe. His voice is shaky, but he's talking to Koda. He's like, I need to tell you some of the more rules of time. And the fourth rule of time, that basically explains why your shoulder is still injured. The fourth rule of time is that your injuries remain regardless of whether you're crossing through timelines. So you can't use time travel to escape an injury. Akiyoshi, he's still working on Koda's That's shoulder. Right? He's stitching it up and he's like, oh, here comes this old ass nigga, bro. Talking about that time travel mumbo jumbo again. And Koda's like, mumbo jumbo, like you don't believe Yang? And Akiyoshi's like, hell no, nah, I don't believe in time travel and shit. Like, I don't know what y'all are talking about. This is the first time we've ever met. Koda's like, because you gotta think about it right Koda met Akiyoshi in the last timeline right they had their interesting encounter in the beginning of the manga but weird we nigga now, man since we went back in time again another problem has arisen for Koda that problem being that he's never met Akiyoshi before right and so him and Akiyoshi don't really have any sort of rapport and this kind of brings up like the problem that Koda is going to have in general right is that when he resets back to the mm. beginning of the mission sure he might have the memories from the last timeline that he can use to put himself in an advantageous situation in an advantageous position during this timeline but all the connections that he's made all all the relationships that he's made during the last timeline they don't count anymore they never happened in this timeline so Koda he's talking to Akiyoshi right he's like so if you don't believe in any of the time travel stuff then why do you even help Yang in the first place and Akiyoshi he keeps it a buck right you got to respect Akiyoshi he's like look bro all that matters to me is that I'm getting paid right hey, roll new. Old she. Who's <laughs> talking some bullshit about time travel and terrorists I don't care bro as long as that check clears as long as they get their money on bro. <laughs> 
Shit, it's whatever. Koda, he's looking at Akiyoshi, right? Because, you know, despite having known Akiyoshi in the last timeline, he didn't really get much of a chance to get to know Akiyoshi, I suppose. And he's like, Akiyoshi, are, are you a doctor? He never knew this in the last timeline. And Akiyoshi's like, I mean, kind of, but I haven't been a doctor in a long time. I haven't been a practicing doctor in a long time. And Koda's just thinking to himself, like, damn, who is this man? Like, I really don't even know Akiyoshi like that. We cut to Naomi, right, who I think is low-key the the center of this episode the center of this arc yeah. and she's in her hotel room now right she's in the bathroom she's looking in the mirror and she just looks mortified bro because in her mind out of nowhere she is just pregnant as hell bro she literally is looking at her belly right belly about swollen as hell bro looks like she got twins or something i don't know bro she's super pregnant but she's literally like yo am i dreaming and i do want to stop to talk about this like pregnancy plot line that's been mm, going on with mm. me because i feel like this is damn near let me put it like this this plot line in particular was the plot line that really made Babel stand out for me right like i've read or watched or played multiple time travel stories that explore time travel from a different angle but i don't think i've seen time travel explored from the angle of what happens if you time travel as a human being with another human being inside of you right and obviously you know being pregnant is wait she's not the, she's not time traveling though man my smooth brain head ass is not able to understand what the hell going on now it's one of the only situations in which you as a human would have another human being inside of you and so i just think it's a really interesting angle to take but anyway we cut back to naomi's room and her phone rings right it's the the phone call she's supposed to get to line up this assassination that they're gonna do. The dude, just like in the last timeline, he's speaking code to Naomi. He's like, Merry Christmas, Naomi. And Naomi, she's like, yeah, I just got to my room. Um, and you know, the guy goes on, he's like, what would you like Santa to bring you? Basically their code for what tools do you need for this assassination? And Naomi, she's like, well, I need a large suitcase, but, and she pauses, right? Her hands start shaking. And she's quiet for a long time, a suspiciously long time. And the dude on the other end, he's like, Naomi, like, answer me right now. Like, what's going on? And she's like, I have to call off the mission tonight. I'm not feeling well. And the dude's like, call off the mission. Like, we can't call off the mission. We've already got shit rolling. Ozaki's already got the target. And Naomi's like, I'm sorry, but I have to call off the mission. She hangs up. And again, we just get this mortified look at her face, right? She's terrified because she's realized that she started contractions. The dude on the other end, who we now know is the concierge of the hotel, he's like, Naomi! You know, he's he's tweaking, right? Because the mission is falling apart before his very eyes. The dude, Kagawa, he's looking, he's like, like, do we have trouble? Is something happening that's not supposed to happen? Concierge, he's like, bring up Naomi's room. Kagawa, you know, he types some shit on the keyboard. He brings up Naomi's room, the live feed, the hidden camera they have in her room, and they get a look at her, <laughs> pregnant as hell, and they're both like, yo, what the fuck is going on, bro? Kagawa's like, bro, she's pregnant, and the concierge is like, there's no way that's possible. She wasn't pregnant when we organized this mission. How the hell is she suddenly pregnant sitting at the side of her bed like this? We cut back to Koda and Akiyoshi and Yang and them, right? And Koda and Yang are having a discussion about what had happened in the last timeline, right? Koda is basically updating Yang on the information that he was able to secure so far. And so Koda, he's talking to Yang and he's like, all right, check this out. I managed to find out that there's an organization that carries out hitman contracts that carries out murder contracts within the babble and yang he's like okay okay well done there's a good chance that this organization is somehow linked to the terrorists that's gonna you know cause world war three the big mission the big event that they're trying to stop here in the first place we then get a look at yang right we get a real close-up at him we get a look at his face Ooh, at ain't trying to see that bro ass limbs right you gotta remember that yang's blowback from time travel is that he ages every time he time travels and so you know he's he's on his last limbs at this point Koda just looking at yang he could tell like oh man this dude this dude yang is not looking good bro like it might be up for yang soon but before he could think about this for too long yang questions Koda about ozaki he's like so before i turn back time what had happened to ozaki he remembers that Koda had been talking to ozaki in the last timeline and so you know he was wondering if there were any updates about ozaki Koda he thinks back right to watching ozaki get shot through the chest twice and he thinks back to the conversation that they had and he puts on this serious face and he looks at yang he's like i don't think that ozaki is the terrorist you remember in the last timeline they were low-key suspecting that ozaki was the terrorist mm. linked to the terrorist in some way but you know now that koda's gotten closer to ozaki kind of heard his old backstory 
He kind of trusts Ozaki at this point, even if Ozaki won't remember him in this timeline. Akiyoshi, he overhears them talking and he's like, oh, y'all talk about that creepy pretty boy? He's like washing the blood off his hands. And he's like, yeah, he came in here tonight with this cute cabin attendant girl. And Koda, he's like, hold on, a cabin attendant? He thinks back to the hey, conversation. Then the girl. That the cabin attendant will get killed tonight and we'll get shoved into the washing machine. We get a look at Akiyoshi, right? He's finishing washing his hands. He's drying his hands off and he turns around. Koda's left the room somehow. Akiyoshi's like, what, where, where the hell is the kid at, right? And you know, my boy Yang, he looks proud, bro. He's like, hey, you know, Koda had to get back to it. He had to get back to work. We get a look at Akiyoshi's jacket, which is on the chair. And then we get a closer look at it. We get a closer look at the gun holster and we realize that Akiyoshi's gun is gone. We're left to us. Man, what had that goof ass nigga about to do with that gun? Assume that Koda grabbed Akiyoshi's gun before he left out. Yang, he then assigns Akiyoshi another job. He's like, Akiyoshi, look, I know I'm asking a lot of you right now, but I have an important job for you. And Akiyoshi's like, all right, like, what now, old man? Like, what now, Unc? Like, you gotta respect Akiyoshi, bro. I mean, to be fair, he's doing it because he's getting paid, but shit on the house surgery is crazy bro but we get a look at coda right and my boy like he finally looking a little swagged out now he finally looking locked in he's he's walking right his shoulder's still fucked up but shit he's he's fighting through it and he's walking down the hall he's like i have to stop ozaki from killing this woman and i'm not gonna lie bro i'm liking the coda development right because this time in the last the man went from a, a nigga that get none <laughs> Dude, nigga, that can't song. <laughs> few episodes, you know, Coda would have had this whole big conundrum. Oh, I don't know if I'm strong enough yet. I don't know if I'm worthy. But nah, now bro is really getting away. Yeah, once you see niggas dying, yeah, it, it changes a dude, man. Obviously. Perk, right? We didn't get a look at Ozaki, though, right? He's sitting on his... Bro, ain't, ain't nobody trying to see that man booty, boy. I'm glad I'm, I'm seeing this video on YouTube and they got a censor their bit. Bed, bare booty naked, cheeks out and everything, right? I don't know what this author's deal is. We're just randomly throwing cheeks in their manga, right? That nigga like, weird, bro. At this page, I literally see two straight panels of cheeks, bro. Man cheeks, woman cheeks. The man cheeks? Yeah, we got a problem with them, but... <laughs> they just love cheeks in this manga, bro. <laughs> I, I don't know, but we get a closer look. At the scar on Ozaki's back, right? The scar that we know is a shotgun scar. And we start to fade into a flashback. As we're fading into this flashback, Ozaki's thinking to himself, like, it's been so long, I've come this far, like, I can't give up now. And then we get a more in-depth flashback of Ozaki's tragic backstory. So we're chilling at the Ozaki residence, right? It's someone's birthday, we don't know who's. Based on how tragic this nigga is already, I can only assume that it's his birthday, right? I can only assume that his life got ruined on his special day, but we suddenly see this birthday cake drop onto the ground, right? And then we get this full page spread, right? And as if this backstory wasn't already- Why this looking like he, look like he finna bust a move? He fucked up enough, bro. Tell me why the person who had to kill this man's parents was a literal creepy clown, bro. Like, what What did he need the creepy clown mask for, bro? What, did they just want to inflict max trauma on my boy Ozaki, bro? But this creepy clown dude, right? He got this big ass shotgun in his hand, right? And here comes Ozaki's pops. He's trying to protect his wife, his kids. The wife kind of bad, I'm not going to lie, but focus, bro. He's trying to protect his wife, his kids, right? And man, you made a lock in, boy. his tongue out, and then bah! right in front of Ozaki's face, bro. Ozaki is watching his parents, melons ripped off, falling to the ground. He's like, hmm. uh, he doesn't know what to do. Nigga got a Merry Christmas hat on his head. Now that I think about it, bro, was this nigga born on Christmas? Hold on. Oh, I know his presence must be weak as hell, bro. I'm born in mid-December, late December. Niggas already be combining my Christmas gifts with my birthday gifts. I know this nigga Ozaki has it rough if his, <laughs> if his birthday hmm is on Christmas, but I mean, I guess this is probably rougher than, you know, getting less presents, getting your parents killed in front of your face. But anywho, Ozaki, he's watching his parents literally die in front of him, right? And of course, this dumbass little sister, bro, little sister's always gotta be on some female. <laughs> I'm playing, man. It's just a joke. Decision shit, bro. The little sister starts running to the mom and dad. You can't blame her, though, bro. She's, like, young as hell. She looks uh, like she's full of creepy clown. You know, he's like... Fucking kids, man. I hate kids. Hey, free target. Loads up his gun. Ozaki, big brother moves. W big brother. He jumps in the way. Boom. Takes the shotgun shells to his back. We know Damn. his backstory from the last episode, but we do get a lot more Oof. in depth this time, right? We see a blood splatter against the wall, right? And it splatters against this little stuffed animal like this little stuffed bunny we then get a look 
This nigga look ugly as hell in this frame, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we get a look at Ozaki as he's reminiscing on this tragedy that had happened to him. And he is mad as hell, bro. He is tight, bro. He is ready for that get back, right? And zzz, zzz, his phone starts ringing, right? He's assuming the mission's going on. And so he picks up the phone. He's like, hello? Concierge is on the other end. He's like, where's the target? Hmm. And, you know, Ozaki gives a status update. She's in the shower. She should be leaving the room soon. You know, everything's going as planned. Concierge is like, all right, cool. Good work. But uh, we ran into something and we need you to substitute. Ozaki's like, substitute? And Concierge is like, yeah, uh... We need you to kill the target. Do it in the elevator and we'll retrieve the body. And Ozaki's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, hold on, pal. This wasn't a part of the deal. This wasn't the deal that we struck out. The concierge is like, look, bro, something came up. You're the only person we have right now. You got to follow through, right? Ozaki, he's on the other end. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to have him. Bro, why are they looking at this nigga through the camera, man? Look at a grown ass man. Come on, he booty naked, man. Could have just called him. No, there's no need to, like, peep, uh, check his room, man. Oh, high ground. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to be mr ethics he's like i told you guys i can't have a job where i'm the one doing a killing i don't want to have a job i don't want to take a job where i have a direct hand in the dead and i'm just sitting here like bro i'm not gonna lie what you're doing right now you still have a direct hand in the dead bro like yes you know if we if we if we went legal with it you'd probably go down as an accomplice but no bro they're still throwing the book at you bro you're basically walking this girl into her death i don't know why you're trying to stand on principles now but concierge is like look if you don't kill her, <laughs> nigga, we'll kill you, all right? You need to adapt to the situation and get her done. Well, like, <laughs> Ozaki's like, <laughs> still sitting bare booty naked on the bed, right? Concierge weird ass looking at him through the TV screen. Ozaki's like, all right, bro, you got it. Kagawa weird ass, he's like, yo, isn't he just like a, a thug, bro? Just like a random thug we pulled off the street? Like, are you sure we should really be trusting him with such an important job? And Concierge, he's just like, bro, who else do we have? What else can we do? Ozaki, he's conflicted now, right? He's sitting on the bed, all edgy, all, all malding. He's like, <laughs> he's squeezing his phone. But, you know, the woman, the cabin lady, she comes out the shower, fast ass shower. I know she ain't wipe her ass, bro. But Ozaki, he turns around, right? <laughs> he's basically still the fuck you know like, that? My get back is still the number one thing to me right now. So if I have to become a demon to get this get back, if I have to commit murder to get my get back for my family, then it is what it is, bro. I'll commit murder. We then cut back to Naomi, right? She's hobbling, barely upright. She's stumbling through the hall. I don't know why she's wearing heels right now. That's crazy, bro. Please take those off. But she's talking to herself, right? She's thinking to herself. She's like, I got to get to the hospital. And suddenly her water breaks in the middle of the hallway. Hey. Big, tall ass nigga come up behind her, right? She turns around to see who it is. And it's Akiyoshi, the boy Akiyoshi. He's like, hey, you need a hand there? Naomi, you know, she puts on the demon. Are you all right? <laughs> the way he just came in is like uh, that video of that that guy, uh, the the coach with the basketball. I don't know. The referee catching the ball and took it. Took it. Y'all all right? <laughs> so stupid as all you, man. She's like, you touch me and I'll kill you. And honestly, bro, with what she's shown so far, I don't doubt it for a second, bro. She'll probably drop this nigga off with the whole nine month baby in her stomach. But Akiyoshi, he's like, look, I'm not even trying to be here on some weird shit or nothing like that. Like, I may not look like it, but I have a doctor's license and I've been in the delivery room countless times, bro. Dozens of times. I know what I'm doing. And Naomi, she's like, well, what are you talking about? And he explains, he's like, I worked on a team of doctors in Africa when I was young. Like, you know what I mean? I know how to deliver babies in crisis situations. You have to trust me right now. We also have to hurry because if we don't do something quick, both you and your baby are in big trouble right now. Naomi hears this and she's like, oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? The gravity of the situation is starting to weigh on her. She's starting to realize just how desperate this situation is. We then cut to Coda. A lot of cutting back and forth in this episode, as you can see. Mm. He's on the elevator right now, and he's going down the elevator. He's trying to get to the cabin lady before she gets killed, right? Because he knows that tonight she is destined to be killed. He knows Ozaki's on the 25th floor, and so he gets off on the 25th floor and starts running to his room, right? He's like, please don't tell me I'm too late. We then get a look at Ozaki and the cabin lady. They're walking through the hallway as well. He's like, you know, he's trying to play it off. You know, he's he's still, you know, keeping keeping a suave about it. He's like, yeah, I'll take you to the lobby. You know, the woman doesn't know that she's about to get 
fucking murked inside the elevator and so she's all like oh how sweet like thank you what a gentleman walking me to the lobby and we get a look at ozaki's crazy ass bro there's <laughs> always some crazy shit going on with ozaki's eyes bro. this nigga will be all real perks right? man this nigga has crazy eyes bro it's like he can't hide it because we get a closer look at his eye and he's looking at this girl like I can't even, I don't even know how to describe this, bro. This nigga trying to activate his Sharingan or some shit. Bakoda, he's sprinting through the hallway. He hits the corner and he sees Ozaki and the cabin lady, you know, about to head over to the elevator. Ozaki, he takes a brief look at Koda, but you got to remember, he doesn't really know Koda in this timeline. And so he just keeps it pushing, right? He takes mm. the cabin lady and they start walking toward the elevator. Koda even realizes this, right? He's like, damn, Ozaki doesn't know me anymore. I don't have a rapport with him. We're not friends in this timeline. How am I supposed to stop this assassination from happening? Suddenly a hand grabs Koda's shoulder, right? His bad shoulder, his shoulder that he got shot in. He's like, <laughs> he winces in pain from the hand. And we turn around and see that Yukiko is back there. I swear Yukiko just be popping up at the most inconvenient times, right? <laughs> but Yukiko's like, oh, my fault, right? She doesn't know bro is injured. And she's like, I'm sorry, are you hurt? And Coda, you know, nigga, nigga try to... <laughs> Damn, Sadie, nah, to man. Ick, bro. Just, just, you feel me? I was just lifting weights. Ain't nothing crazy for me. <laughs> bro got shot through the whole shoulder, still trying to play it off. Nah, I'm good. Face <laughs> ass. Nah, I'm yeah, good. I'm chilling, nigga. Me. Yukiko sees right through it. She's like, oh, okay, because, you know, you didn't look so good in the lobby. You were bleeding in the lobby. And then Coda's like, oh, hold on. I don't know... And this is shit to be pissing me off about Coda, bro. This <laughs> nigga is on a save the world mission right now. Why is he worried about, uh, was my kiss with Yukiko reset? Akio should. Let the, bro, let them, bro, the world is about to end. Let, let the man still, like, uh, let him still keep, uh, fuck, I can't even speak, bro. Let him dream, man, come Stop on. Right Akio, she's a doctor, right? Akio, she's a doctor, right? He got a medical license, yeah? He needs to prescribe this nigga Koda some fucking, some, some goddamn ADHD meds or something, bro. Because this nigga Koda might be the most distractible fucking, Koda might be the most distractible character I've ever seen in my life, bro. I've never seen a nigga trying to save somebody's life and get thoroughly distracted while doing so by a kiss that happened in the past that he's trying to wonder if the kiss still registers in this timeline. Who cares? Cabin Lady, let's, let's lock in, bro. Let's lock in. This is the thing about Coda, bro. Every time he's making a little bit of progress, bro, it's like he just does some dumb shit that's just like, ah. Bro, he's a nigga, bro. He's a nigga, man. Come on, man. Koda, right? <laughs> he realizes, oh shit, I'm supposed to be rescuing this lady. I'm over here thinking about a kiss and this lady is is walking into her death. He's like, oh, sorry, I'm busy. He starts running away, right? Yukiko is like, what the hell is going on with this man? Koda dumbass easily could have been in the elevator. He misses the elevator because he was too busy thinking oh, about a kiss that happened in another timeline. But as the elevator is closing, he sees concierge in there, right? He's like, concierge, like, damn, this nigga concierge really is evil, mm. bro. He really is involved with the killing. He starts banging on the elevator. He's like, Fuck, they're gonna kill her in this elevator and there's nothing I can do about it. I missed the elevator. We get a look inside the elevator, right? And here come Ozaki, right? Ozaki and trench coat concierge, right? They're carrying out their plan. So Ozaki, right? You know what I mean? He turns his, he turns his, ah, you know, he gets big. He gets all, all handsome, right? He starts Pause. wrapping his arms around the girl, acting like he's getting all, you know, about to sweet talk her, about to get all suggestive on the elevator. And you know, the girl, she's blushing. She's like, stop it. There's someone watching. And Ozaki, he's just like, I'm sorry. And the girl's like, what do you mean you're sorry? Like, what's going on? Ozaki, <laughs> stupid sleeper, bro. That nigga Ozaki loved to put niggas in that sleeper, bro. That's his number one move, bro. Never give your back to Ozaki because you finna feel that bicep. Pause. Pause. Get your trachea, bro. And, you know, he starts squeezing the girl. She's choking, right? She, yeah, bro, it's it's up for her, right? Koda, his dumb ass got to take the stairs now because he was <laughs> the the fuck is this is the staircase where you got the kiss now? Yeah, since you like the kiss so much, go ahead and take the stairs, nigga. But that nigga is running down the stairs, right? He's like, <sighs> fuck, I fucked up. It's hopeless. I'm never going to make it in time. His dumb ass trips down the stairs, right? <laughs> about to fall down a whole flight of stairs, bust his dome open. But his main character plot armor activates, right? He feels this weird sensation, a sensation similar to the sensation that he felt way, way back. We talked about it uh, an episode or two ago. Mm. He was about to crash into a lady and her baby. He feels a similar sensation. And suddenly he does like a full 360 flip and lands on his feet, right? He's like, hold on, could this be what I think it is? He walks out the staircase. He's like, oh shit, he looks down the hall. He sees a little kid mid yo-yo trick, right? And first of all, quick aside, 
this yo-yo trick is cold as hell, bro. How the hell did he get his yo-yo in a full goddamn obtuse <laughs> angle, bro? We really need a manga about this kid and his yo-yo journeys, because this nigga is really different with that yo-yo. But Koda, he's zooming down the hall. Beautiful form, by the way. Like, now nah, that boy is sprinting, man. Damn, he what happened blitzing. to that bad shoulder, bro? But he's like, I knew it. Yang stopped time for me. He goes to the elevator. He's like, so if everything works as I remember, even though time is stopped for me, the things that I interact with should still be able to work. He clicks the elevator button to go down, right? He went down one floor and the elevator, it works. It opens up. He steps onto the elevator and he basically steps onto the scene of the murder with Ozaki getting the girl in the rear naked choke and concierge over there just watching on some evil shit. I don't know, with big ass suitcase that Naomi ordered. So Koda, you know, he gets to work quickly. He moves Ozaki's arm and he pushes the girl out of the elevator and then hits the door close button so that she's safe, right? And right as he hits the door close button, boom, time starts again. Ozaki, he's like, what, what the hell? Cause you gotta think about it, bro. This is probably crazy. Cause in his mind, I feel like when, when time freeze stuff happens, right? If you're not a part of, I guess the time freezing force, right? Like, if oh, they freeze in time. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? They, the time refreezes again. I'm like, huh? Bro, there's too many information in, in this bit. That's why I be getting sometimes sidetracked. You don't know time is frozen. Or forget it, I'm actually doing a reaction. <laughs> you won't know time is past, right? So if time froze right now, mid recording, I would never know. It would feel like time didn't pass to me because time's not past. Am I? You understand what it I'm saying. It makes sense. Right? It makes so sense. So for Ozaki, it literally felt like within an instant, within less than an instant, he's went from having this girl in the sleeper hold to just standing there, right? He's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Koda, he's looking at this nigga. Ozaki's like, you're Koda, ma! Hooks that nigga dead in this shit. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Why did you do that, Koda? Concierge sees Ozaki get jawed in this shit. He's like, oh no. What the hell? We gotta handle this dude. He pulls a knife out of his trench coat. Koda pulls that stick out of his trench coat. He's like, drop the knife, concierge. I've never seen Koda finger on the trigger. That nigga Koda is not scared about killing no more, bro. I'll tell you that much. The concierge, right? He looks at Koda. He's got the sunglasses on. He looks at Koda. He's like, I'm afraid I'm not the man you're looking for. Koda's like, what What do you mean you're not the man I'm looking for, bro? Like, I know who you are, you're concierge. Ding, the door opens behind them, right? They're in the lobby, right, Koda? He puts his gun back because he doesn't want to be caught, you know, with the stick in somebody's face. And he's like, "What? wait, where are you going? Trinsco concierge walks out the elevator. He's carrying the suitcase, right? But Koda looks to the side, to his left, and it's concierge. Concierge ah. turns around and looks at him, right? And then Koda looks back to his right. It's trench coat concierge over here. Suit concierge over here. Koda's like, oh, hell nah, brother. What the fuck is going on? Suddenly, big ass ham, boom, <laughs> grabs his shoulder, pulls this nigga back into the elevator and closes the door, right? It's Ozaki about to beat this nigga ass again. Boom, he shoves him up against the elevator wall and he's like, so who the hell are you, bro? Like, you better get to talking. And Koda's like, shit, bro. Like, it's just a lot to process right now. We cut into where Naomi and Akiyoshi are. And shit is just getting wicked with them too, bro. Naomi is just natural birthing inside one of the hotel bathtubs, bro. And, you know, I mean, prayers up for Naomi, bro. Because I know this has to be... A what you mean prayers, bro? She's an assassin. What the hell are you talking about? Crazy situation for her, bro. The hell? I hear the man talking about. Call me Mr. Zang cause I'm a flippy bass